Shalom. I'm going to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rakakadash. I want to send forth double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone to rule well. Shalom, wa barakim, la barakim, peace and blessings to the elect. And uh, Lord's will, this is edifying. And um, essentially, I was uh, meditating on uh, the scripture in Revelation about the white stone. All right, and, and how the elect is going to be forgiven for their iniquity. They're going to be pardoned for their sins. All right, and um, so let's go ahead and start out with this verse. It's Revelation 2 and 17. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone. And in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. All right, so this is to the to the elect, okay, that overcome, that endure to the end, like the scriptures always say. All right, and it says that you're going to get in a new name that no man knows but but the Lord. So we're going to get our name, all right, which we have from the foundation of the earth, our true names. All right, because each spirit has a has a, a has a name that that the Lord has already given us that is perfectly. Uh, in unison with our spirit, with who we are, all right? All right, but the point is, I want to get that white stone. It says we're going to receive a white stone. So let's go ahead and get that definition, all right? And if you go into that word stone, all right, it says cephos. But I want to go into the definition, the A, where it says A. It says, in the ancient courts of justice, the accused were condemned by black pebbles and they're acquitted by white. All right, so essentially we're going to be acquitted. Now let me get this off. Actually, let me put it right back on for a second. I'm going to look up the word acquitted. All right. And it just says absolve, um, not guilty, verdict of not guilty. Okay. So we're going to be found not guilty. In the sight of the Lord. All right. Which is very important because the day of doom is coming. All right. And if you look up the word doom, I've done it before. I'm not going to do it right now. But go ahead and go into the etymology. Look up the word doom. All right. Doom means law. All right. Because the day of doom is coming, meaning the day of the law being um, uh, executed is coming. The Lord is coming to execute the law. All right. So that's why everybody... Is going to die, all right? Because everybody is guilty of the law, except for the elect. Why? Because they believe in Yahweh Shai. So let's go ahead and get John 3 real quick because, you know, the church, they always bring this out, but they don't have the proper understanding. This is John 3 and 16. It says, for the Most High so loved the world. And this is talking about Israel because Israel is under the law, all right? Unless they be under a new law, which is Yahweh Shai, all right? But if you reject Yahweh Shai, that means you're under the old law, all right? And every man is guilty of the old law. All right, so this is John 3 and 16. For Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So if you believe in Yahweh Shai, you're going to be found innocent and you're going to live. All right, but if you don't believe in Yahweh Shai, you're condemned. All right. Okay. Let me, uh, let me jump down to verse 19. It says, And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And we know that Yahweh Shai is the light. All right. But where you're condemned when you reject Yahweh Shai. See, the, our people, two-thirds of our people, they, they love to do evil more than they loved our Lord. All right. So therefore, they're condemned. Okay. But the elect, all right, they're going to receive that white stone. They're going to be pardoned. This is Romans 8 and 1. It says, there is therefore now. No condemnation to them which are in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. All right? So we're going to be innocent. We're going to be found innocent in the sight of the Lord. All right? Because what? We're, we're walking after the spirit. All right? We're following the Lord whatsoever he goeth, man. We're being obedient. All right? Through what? Through faith, man. Let's start. Let's get Hebrews 11. All right? This is Hebrews 11 and 6. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to the Most High must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And what's the ultimate reward? 
is to be pardoned for our sin, pardoned for our iniquity, man. All right, but of course we're going to receive the kingdom and everything of it. All right, but to be accepted of the Most High, it comes through the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai. All right, so let's go ahead and get uh, some more scriptures. Let's go ahead and get Psalms. This is Psalms 32 and 1. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is, he, is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and whose spirit there is no guile. All right? So you're a blessed, you're a blessed man in whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, meaning he doesn't judge us according to our iniquity. All right? Whose sins are, are forgiven, man. All right? And, and the only people who this applies to is the elect, the house of David. All right? Because we all know this is a psalm of David, right? All right? We all know that King David committed sins unto death, but yet the Lord forgave him. All right? Same thing with us who are of that household. All right, the household of faith, the household of David, all right, that's being risen in these last days. We're going to receive that that mercy that that King David received. All right, it's the Book of Isaiah, chapter fifty-five and one. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that have no money, come yea, buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. All right, so. In order to receive that mercy, you have to receive this knowledge, man. The beautiful thing about this mercy that the Lord is going to bestow upon us is it doesn't cost any money. Everything else in this life, it has a price, all right? This this truth, the price is, uh, you know, it's your time, man, your effort. Verse 2, it says, Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? And you labor for that which satisfieth not. Hearken diligently unto me and eat. Yea, that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in its fatness. All right, because the money that you make in this world, the food that you eat, all right, is corruptible. It doesn't really profit you at the end of the day. All right, but putting in work for this, for this truth is going to lead on to everlasting life. Okay, and here's the point, verse 3. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live, and I'll make an everlasting covenant with you even the sure mercies of David. All right, so we're waiting for and hoping for to receive the sure mercies of David, okay? Again, like the scriptures say, King David, he committed he committed murder, he committed adultery, man. You, you could go into the story of David, all right? But David repented, okay? And he continued to, to, to walk after the Most High and he was forgiven, man, all right? That doesn't mean that because we have hope to be saved, that doesn't mean that we're going to to go off, man. Continue to, to go off, all right? We're still going to try to do the best that we can. That's why it says in Romans, who walking after the flesh after the spirit, all right? All right, just to get, because this right here is, is the prayer that King David sent up. Uh, this is what King David sent up after he committed those sins, all right? Psalms 51 and 1, it says, The chief musician, a psalm of David. When Nathan the prophet came unto him after he had gone in to Bathsheba. All right, because what? That was a sin. That was adultery. All right. He said, Have mercy upon me, O most high, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. All right, so seek King David, even though. The Lord ultimately have mercy upon him. Lord's will, the Lord ultimately has mercy upon us. And the Lord's going to have mercy upon the elect. All right. The elect is in a sorrowful state, man. You can see that by way of this prayer that King David is sending up, man. All right. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. You have to do that. You have to acknowledge your sin. All right, you acknowledge your sin, and then you offend less, like the scriptures say. Let me go ahead and get that real quick. It's the book of Sirach. Um, so like, yeah, I'm going to find it real quick. Um, let's see. I know exactly where it is, like, if I have my sword on me. There we go. Uh, yeah, here we go. This is uh, Sirach 17 and verse 24. It says, But unto them that repent, he granted them return 
and comfort those that failed in patience. All right, so we have to repent, man. Okay? It says, return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. So this is the things that the elect are doing and ultimately it's going to lead unto their forgiveness, man, which is a blessing, man. They're going to be pardoned. All right, so let's go back to Psalms. Psalms 51 and 4. Against thee, the only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I have shaped, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom. All right, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read down. All right, because these are the main verses, the ones I have highlighted. Psalms 51 and 7. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, I shall be whiter than snow. And we understand that we're being cleansed of this word. All right? The hyssop, okay, which is a cleansing agent. The water. All right, what's cleansing us is, is these holy scriptures and believing in them. Psalms 119 and 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. All right, so let's go back. This is Psalms 51, verse 8. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Okay, and that's what the Lord has done for, for King David. And that's what the Lord's going to do for the rest of the elect, which we hope we're part of. He's going to uh, blot out our, his hide his face from our sins, man. Verse, two, verse 10, create in me a clean heart, O Most High, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. All right, and that's what we're doing, man. The Lord has, has cleansed us, made us clean, given us his word, put his spirit upon us. And we're out here, you know, converting by, by teaching the Lord. The fear of the Lord to as many that will hear. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get Revelation 14. It's Revelation 14. And uh, I'm going to read verse 1, and I'm going to jump down. It says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. All right, so it's talking about the elect are starting with the governing body. All right, and they're going to have the name of the Lord in their on their mind. All right, that's the beginning of of, of this forgiveness, man, having the names of the Lord, the scripture saying Acts, there's no name under heaven given to, given to men whereby we must be saved. Now let's go ahead and jump down to, uh, I'm going to jump down to verse uh, three. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand, which were redeemed from the earth. So the elect starting with the hundred and forty four thousand. All right, they were redeemed from the earth, meaning before the earth was even formed. All right, the Lord set it up where they're going to be forgiven in the spirit, man. All right, by what? Giving them this truth. Let's go ahead and get a scripture to back that up real quick. This is 2 Thessalonians 2 and 13. It says, But we are bound to give thanks always to the Most High for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because the Most High hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation. Through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. All right, so if you being if you believe in this truth, okay, and you're a part of this truth, you're being sanctified, you're being cleansed. And in order to be be a part of this process, you had to have been chosen from the beginning. All right, which you know that's a that's a blessing. Call all your how about you shot, man. But at the end of the day, we're gonna be pardoned for this. Verse four it says, These are they which were not defiled with women. For they are virgins, all right? And the word virgin, the reason why they're called virgins is because they're pure, all right? And they're not defiled with women. is because they don't go, they're not tossed to and fro with every doctrine. They don't believe in other philosophies and beliefs. They're rooted and grounded in the Lord, all right? It says, these are they which follow the Lamb with whoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto the Most High and to the Lamb. Verse 5, here's the point. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of the Most High. So we're going to be without fault before the throne of the Most High. All right. So I'm going to end on that. Lord's will, the point was made. Call Allah, Yahweh, Shai. 
Bashim Rukah Kadash, double honors to the apostles, and that was a great millstone to rule well. Shalom wa barakim la bukarim. Shalom. Shalom to your leg.